Okay, take it away. Cool. Well, welcome those of you who are joining us today, and hopefully we'll have a few stragglers come in as we go along here. But it looks like all of you have mastered this step just fine with making sure your full name is displayed. So thank you for that, since we'll be taking attendance and then at the end showing our survey that we highly recommend you complete. So just want to make sure we have your names captured. But this is Career Academy. You've got skills. Uh, this is our third workshop in the series. We'll have more throughout the remainder of the fall semester. And today we're going to be talking about transferable skills in depth and doing a couple of we hope fun exercises with all of you. So I think that should take care of the welcoming comments, Shannon, unless there's something I forgot. Yes, let me just add that the Career Academy series runs throughout the fall semester and we have eight sessions. This is the third, as Sam mentioned. Um, but if you are participating today and want to participate with at least five of the sessions, then your attendance will count towards the completion of the Career Academy badge, which you can see on the screen right there. Um, and it's a digital badge that you can earn from us at the end of the term. And if you do earn the badge by attending five sessions, you're also entered into a drawing for an iPad seventh generation um, along with the keyboard as well. So in order to participate, we are gonna show you a, um, a quiz or an assessment link in the chat later on. We just need you to complete it quickly with your name and a couple of questions so that we can count your attendance towards the badge and eventually towards the drawing. And if you've missed any sessions, each recording is posted onto our career webpage on our events tab. And we can get that stuff out to you as well, but you can watch them later and still participate, even if you miss the first uh, couple we've already hosted. So just want to add that piece and I'll, I'll reinforce it at the end as well. Cool. All right, I see we've had a couple more people join. So welcome to those of you who just welcome. came on. I see Linda's there. <laughs> All right. Okay, so today I'm Shannon Hargrove and Sam, Samantha Karpiloff is with us and we're hosting this, this afternoon and um, we're going to cover transferable skills. And so our agenda is threefold. We are going to define transferable skills and career competencies. We're gonna introduce you to John Maverick because he's got skills. And then we're gonna do a transferable skills statement exercise. And by the end of this session, you will know all about transferable skills and the ones you possess currently. Cool, so starting out with some definitions of, or a definition of transferable skills. There are any skills that you possess that are useful to employers across various jobs and industries. So you see a few examples in the photo on this slide that could include adaptability, organization, maybe problem solving, teamwork, other qualities that employers are seeking in strong, jo strong job candidates. And these are things that should be on your resume and mentioned in your cover letters to showcase to employers that you're qualified for the position, whether it's an internship, a part-time job, a full-time position. And that's really what is going to make you shine because employers want to hear that you've done similar, if not the same work before. And that's how you'll be more valuable to them uh, and be able to land these roles that you're interested in. So we'll walk through a few examples of uh, what these are as Shannon mentioned, starting with this slide. So we have three examples here, starting with detail-oriented, being detail-oriented, and what these could look like in your classes versus in the workplace. So for example, taking that first one, in the classroom, you might fine tune a presentation or you know, if you're double or triple checking errors in an essay, that's an example of how you're showing attention to detail. And then in the workplace, this could take form as handling logistics for maybe it's a client project or a company event and being able to balance all the specifics of that. So within that, even you can already get, start to get an example or get an idea in your head of how it's the same skill being utilized in the classroom versus the workplace. And just because you might have 
not had an internship yet or maybe uh, a job that's related to the field that you want to go into, it doesn't mean that you're not prepared and already working on the things that you need to have to find that internship or to find that job. Uh, and the two other examples here, public speaking, you might be giving a presentation in class. In the workplace, this could take form as in team meetings, you give a status update on a project or you ask questions to the, the members in your team. And then in terms of a third example, meeting problems between people, which is a big one. People skills is really very important for any industry and for any job. This might look like as a leader for a group project in class, you're encouraging team members to get along by assigning them tasks and talking through issues, uh, kind of working on problem solving skills there as well. And in the workplace, you might ask for more information from a supervisor or superior when instructions are unclear. And so again, just thinking about how and seeing very clearly how these skills, you might already have them without having really realized it, but they should come through in your bullet points on your resume. And you can use these, of course, as answers to interview questions too, once you get to that stage uh, of the job application process. Okay, so this is our activity. So I think I need to stop sharing to bring up the poll, unless you can do that on your end, Shannon. I'm Let not sure. Uh, yes, I'm launching a poll. Okay, so we have a poll here asking each of you what transferable skills you have from this list, and you should be able to check multiple options. Uh, so check whichever ones that you can think of you've gathered from your classes, whether it's that or work as an e-board member on a club, maybe previous internships or jobs or volunteer work, really anything that you've done in the past that you've gave, um, gathered these qualities from. Check them off and then we can show the results after everyone turns in their, um, turns in their poll here. Give them a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. One more. <laughs> awesome. So I'll just click end polling and we should see the results, right? Share. Yeah, I think show results. Cool. Sharing poll results. Cool. So this is interesting to see how many people have contact others and identify solutions. Those are really key attributes that a lot of employers are seeking in strong job candidates. You know, communication skills are huge. And Shannon will get into that momentarily from some of the NACE competencies. And then identifying solutions, problem solving. I mean, that's why, that's why employers hire. They want someone who can solve their problem. They have an issue and they need someone there to work on it, to solve it. So it's great to see that those are the two biggest ones from this list. Uh, and then gather information is pretty high, being precise, persuading others. Good to see that. Checking for accuracy, train or teach, the other ones that are also included. So great to hear that a lot of you probably have these skills already and maybe you hadn't thought of it before, but now you are starting to get some ideas about what you should add to your resume if it's not already there and how you can speak about these things that you do have when it comes time for interviews or when networking, uh, really important to keep in mind and to constantly be reflecting on that. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. The cool. skills. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. So as Sam alluded, I'm going to talk to you about NACE career competencies. Wow, what is that? So NACE is a professional organization. NACE stands for the National Association of Colleges and Employers. And it's a organization that brings together career services professionals like the career team and employers and specifically employers who are working in um, talent acquisition roles or recruiting who are bringing in often, you know, early talent, college students, interns, things like that. And so one of the 
um, things that the organization has developed is career competencies. And I'm gonna explain them to you. There are eight that have been identified. And this is from input of employers who are working to recruit you know, talent for their organizations. And I'm gonna give you a secret right now is that career competencies are the same thing as transferable skills. Let's soak that in, okay. So the first one they've outlined is critical thinking and problem solving, which many of you um, indicated on our poll have, have that similar skill set. There is, um, I'm gonna read across the top, professionalism and work ethic. They've identified oral and written communications. Then digital technology. Then they've identified leadership as a career competency. Teamwork and collaboration. Also global and intercultural fluency. And lastly, career management. And so they're all defined here, um, but we're gonna dive deeper into them in a little bit. Okay, next slide please, Sam. And so within those eight identified career competencies, employers have also ranked those in, um, on a five point scale on a level of how essential those competencies are for the employees that they're seeking. And so you can see the top four that are ranked over a four point um, average rating are critical thinking and problem solving, followed by teamwork and collaboration, then professionalism and work ethic, and then oral and written communications. And all eight are here, but just to get a sense of how important or critical these are in the eyes of employers seeking you know, staff for their organizations. Okay. And so now we wanna introduce, introduce you to John Maverick. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about him and we are gonna work with John Maverick to understand all of his um, transferable skills or how he's developed his career competencies in his time at Mercy College. So John Maverick is a junior majoring in behavioral science and he has experience as a resident advisor in Hudson Hall and he's the vice president of the Mercy College Education Club and he just completed a summer internship at Big Brothers and Big Sisters. And like I told you before, he's got skills. Awesome, so we're gonna work through <laughs> Uh, several different, actually the career competencies that Shannon just reviewed, we're going to work through each of them, giving examples of how John Maverick has those skills in the classroom and then also, or how one would have them in the classroom and how it translates to his experiences in each of those uh, different activities that we just listed. So starting with critical thinking and problem solving in the classroom, this might look like applying what you are learning from one class to another and then distinguishing what's fact from what's opinion. For John Maverick in his internship, he mentors young children and he provides advice when students confide in him about their problems and refers students to other parties resources as needed. For teamwork and collaboration, this might look like working with a team to complete all aspects of an assignment. And then for John, he depends on his fellow education club members to execute events effectively. And in addition to completing his own tasks, he has his team, uh, he delegates them out to his team. Mm -hmm. For professionalism and work ethic, number three, in the classroom, this would look like citing sources, being accountable and honest, not being disruptive, not plagiarizing, cheating or copying others' work. And then for John, as a resident advisor, he has monthly check-ins with his director and he comes prepared with notes on his progress, asking for feedback and mentioning any incidents that need to be escalated. So for yourselves, kind of thinking about for each student individually here, this might take a while to formulate specific examples for yourself, but I think even creating maybe a chart like this can be helpful to chart out what have I done in the classroom, maybe if you've had an internship or volunteer experience, what have I done there and how does it relate, uh, can be really easy to write it out first and then you know, be all the more prepared for an interview later. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna take you through the next three competencies or skills. Um, the first is oral or written communications. And in the classroom, that can look like asking questions, expressing your ideas clearly, and demonstrating good presentation skills. 
And in John Maverick's experience, he has an experience in his internship where he has often used and developed his oral communication skills in order to effectively understand and work with young children. Um, so that's an area where he's able to apply that to a certain you know, group or constituency he's working with. The second is leadership. So in a classroom setting, that could be taking ownership of yourself, participating in student organizations, forming study groups and volunteering. Um, I think I would expand on taking ownership of self is maybe how you conduct yourself in the classroom setting or, or if you're in a group project, kind of taking the lead or partially taking the lead on executing, you know, your assignments with your classmates. And then in John's Maverick, John Maverick's experience, um, leadership might look like this. Um, in order to raise funds to support club initiatives, John has led the organization and execution of a fundraiser for the education club. So that experience, you know, and the details behind executing that fundraiser could really demonstrate some leadership skills um, in, you know, in a resume or in an interview setting. And then information technology application. Um, this in a classroom might look like typing up all your assignments in a Word doc or using the learning management system or emailing and accessing the internet and using MS Office. Just some examples, and I'm sure all of you have done all of these things, especially this semester, um, working with information technology more and more. And then for John Maverick, as an RA, John uses a residence hall software to log his rounds you know, throughout the building, as well as document incidents of, or conflicts that he may have encountered during his shifts. So that's a proprietary you know, kind of um, data management application that he might use that's specific to his work as an RA. Oh, Lynn is adding a note. Tell us your note, Lynn. I did not mean to insert myself. I apologize. Go ahead. I'm sitting here off camera. I apologize, everybody. But I just wanted to pitch in. Um, NACE gives some details behind, you know, what they mean by their different competencies. And I thought it was very interesting to note that technology for them and the employers that com completed surveys um, means it refers to your ability to use technology, like your general level of tech skill, but it, they also mean um, your high level skills with technology. So can you identify and leverage the appropriate or correct technology to accomplish the task that you need to accomplish? And then also your understanding of what ethical use of technology is. And that's a big broad category that we don't need to dive into today. But um, as you're thinking about how you're using technology, think not only about whether you're good at using a particular tool, but if you had the, have the ability to really analyze tools and, and apply them to what you need to do. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lynn. Is this me as well? I yes. can't remember. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so the last two here, career management, global competency, giving examples of, again of in the classroom and then for John Maverick. So for the first one, career management, this might look like completing your coursework, engaging in clubs and organizations in pursuing internships or work experience. And in terms of completing coursework, I think doing your assignments on time, um, making sure that you're on top of your deadlines and communicating with your professor um, or, or whomever if you need an exception, that kind of management is um, really valued and very important to maintain all throughout your career. So really good quality example of that with career management. And then for John Maverick, his career goal is to work with youth in education setting. So he has mapped out and is taking steps to achieve this goal while studying at Mercy. He has decided to major in behavioral science as a foundation before pursuing his master's degree in teaching. And he takes an active role as a leader of the education club and works and interns in environments that will help him gain the transferable skills he will need to succeed in the future. So he's doing a lot of things mm -hmm. simultaneously, which is what your college experience is about uh, in order to get to where he wants to go. For global competency, in the classroom, this might look like respecting others and their opinions, understanding oneself, building, or building and maintaining healthy relationships as well. 
and for John as an RA, he often acts as a mediator between his residents who come from a variety of cultures and backgrounds. In this role, he learns more about cultures and then is able to demonstrate respect and understanding for each of his residents. And I think for all of us at Mercy, this is really a very valuable thing because we have such a diverse campus or campuses, I guess you should say. Um, and so being able to practice that in I think a variety of settings, not only as an RA is really a um, good thing to have at your disposal. So I think a benefit of Mercy with global competency there. Thank you, Sam. Okay, so next I'm going to talk to you about skills for your resume. So we've talked about transferable skills, we've talked about career competencies, and we mentioned that it's going to be very important to be able to understand what these are and then articulate them, whether you're writing your resume, writing a cover letter, or um, in an interview, or even a networking situation, you know, really could be applicable here. So first I wanna show you this um, report here. This is, uh, again, the employers who were surveyed for NACE are ranking the top five attributes that they're looking for when they're reviewing resumes. Um, and so the top five are problem solving skills, an ability to work in a team, a strong work ethic, the analytical and quantitative skills, and then communication skills. And so they're all the, you know, those are five of the eight competencies. So once again, we're just seeing that it's really reinforced that this is important um, to employers when looking at candidates for positions. Um, so next we're going to talk to you about how you can develop your own transferable skill statements that you can use in these interviews and, and resumes and cover letters to show employers how you meet those um, qualifications they're seeking um, and, you know, should be looked at or, or considered for a role. And Sam is going to walk us through it. Thank you for that lovely introduction. You're welcome. So as Shannon mentioned, this is an exercise for all of you, hopefully to speak up, if not add into the chat, uh, some of examples from your own life, not having to be too detailed here, but some basic examples from your own life so you can start connecting the dots and again, doing that prep work to maybe draft a resume if you don't have one or add some more bullet points to positions that uh, you've already been involved with. So this first uh, one I hear I'll lead as an example for leadership. An example might be when I or someone led a group project in Intro to Psychology, I encouraged my teammates to share their ideas and delegated tasks accordingly. So this is an example of a statement that you might say out loud to an interviewer with sitting across the table from them. And then the connection is that you're comfortable listening to others and managing a project workflow. And all the time, whenever I meet with students, I am constantly telling them to make sure that they're making the connection for the employer and not leave it on the employer to make the connection for, for them because you need to lay out all the information there so it's easy for them to understand how you're qualified and, and for them to see how much you want that job. So for teaching, can someone either put in the chat or maybe unmute themselves and think of an example? It doesn't necessarily have to be from your own background, but maybe just an example for anyone about how teaching could be a transferable skill. One statement for that. Don't everybody jump at once. <laughs> Any brave takers? Oh boy. Got a quiet group. I'm sorry, can you uh, repeat the question? Oh. Sure, so, oh, go ahead, Angela. All right, I'm just gonna take a swing at this. Um, I'm guessing someone who's able to like, you know, someone who can help their friends out with a class, maybe like they need help with a question, They'll, they're able to like help them out in like a connection for like a workplace or they're, they're able to like, like they can take a, a managerial position and like tell people like what, what they're supposed to do, like, not what they're supposed mm -hmm. to do, like help them out more, I guess. Yeah, I think you're I think. on to Angela. <laughs> I think you're, yeah, can I just maybe rephrase a little? 
um, like, yes, yeah, supporting your peers, maybe formally in a peer tutoring role, or maybe just helping your roommate out who's also your classmate to understand some of the material and review it with them, right? Um, and then using that skill set in a workplace could be if you're training, if you have a team um, that you're managing or, or even a new hire, sometimes it's not that you're trained, you're, you know, you're a manager ongoing, but you're helping a new hire get, get acclimated right to the role. So using that teaching ability to, um, you know, explain how things work at that job or how to, you know, conduct the, the job appropriately. Um, so yeah, I think you're on to it, Angela. Very good. Definitely a good example. I think that can apply to everyone, even if you haven't had a role as a tutor, for example, or maybe you haven't been the leader for a group project before. There's probably at least some point throughout all of your years of school where you can say that you've guided someone and they're pointing them in the right direction. Um, so that's, that's good to keep in mind. Let's try one more. Uh, the last one on here, a strong work ethic. What might be an example of that and a connection for how this is a practical skill for the workplace? Anyone else besides Angela? Take a stab at it. Um, maybe a strong work ethic um, would include like handing in like assignments on time in school. Yeah, I think that shows definitely a level of responsibility. Uh, and then maybe to add on to that, you have a strong work ethic because maybe you go above and beyond in those assignments not only turning them in on time, but looking after them, every part of it, you know, not missing anything, no spelling errors, that can also be detail oriented. But uh, kind of letting the fact that you really are a strong student shine through. So that might be a good example. And then that's applicable to any job anybody will ever have is to have a strong work ethic and show that you're willing to learn and ready to do the job when you arrive on your first day and every day. Uh, really important to show that and not just, you know, do the job to do it, but also to show that you, you care and that you are trying your best. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for your participation. That was good. Hopefully you have a better understanding now and can start to make connections from your own life. So before we conclude, I want to point out two things to you and then if you, anybody has any questions or comments too. Um, so on our website, we do have a guide called, I believe it's called the Transferable Skills Guide. Maybe we can fact check that, Sam. Um, but if you want, you know, some kind of tangible, concrete um, thing that will walk you through the examples we showed you today, we do have those available on our website, which is career.mercy.edu in our resources library. And also in Big Interview, which is our interviewing mock interview platform and kind of interview lessons there is a custom set of questions that focus on transferable skills and can kind of walk you through questions that you might encounter with an employer who's trying to learn more about what transferable skills you might have so just two other things that are available to you um, to dive a little deeper if you're in need of those um, that kind of help and of course the coaches can help you one-on-one -on -one as well with that so just wanted to point that out. Um, so before we conclude, are there any questions or things you'd like us to go over again in this realm of transferable skills and the career competencies and just how to approach them in your resume or cover letter or in an interview? We have some transferable skills masters if no one has any questions. That's good to hear. <laughs> well, hopefully this was helpful to you all and you picked up on something new or thought of something new that you hadn't hadn't occurred to you before that you might have in terms of the NACE competencies or really anything from any of the jobs and experiences that you've had before. I think there's always more reflection to be done and that's a key part of this is thinking back to what you've done or maybe in the moment when you're 
in a job or in a volunteer experience, drafting, updating your resume and thinking about you know, what have I done here that is relevant to my, my career and that next job or the next internship I, I want to get. So I think very valuable to spend some time reflecting on that. And as Shannon mentioned, our coaching team is absolutely happy to help you draft those statements, whether you're preparing for an interview, writing your resume, drafting a cover letter. Um, that's what really is the core of all of those things is thinking about what skills do I have and how am I going to be useful to my future employer? Mm -hmm. Do I just put in the chat the link to the transferable skills work um, worksheet or workbook rather? Um, so you're welcome to take that down. And then also, Sam, can I ask you to put the survey link in the chat as well? And so before sure. you get off the call, if you would please click into that survey and fill it out. It's very brief. It's going to ask for your name and a couple of questions um, regarding this presentation. And this will count for your attendance today. So you can use the link or the QR code that was on the screen there and just complete that for your attendance today. And then our next session in Career Academy is next week on Thursday. And the topic is, I don't know what the topic is. I think it's career, career exploration. exploration. Career exploration, thank you. And so next week we'll be hosted by career coaches, Mariana Ayurvi and Lynn Lees and they're going to be talking about career exploration. So that'll be next Thursday at three o'clock at the same Zoom link. And um, I think we'll just hang out for a minute in case there is a lingering or burning question or comment from any of our students today. I actually have a question. Yeah. Um, I missed the, I missed the um, recording from last week. Where can we find, where, where can we find the recording? That's what I meant to ask. Absolutely. It's on our web page, on our events page. I'll pull the link for you and um, put it in the chat in just a second. And so after each session, we're going to post it there and the survey that goes with it. So you definitely want to do the survey. That's how I know you've watched it and you're participating on your own time. And here it comes. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, and so if anyone, if you know of someone who would benefit from today's presentation, it'll be up on our website before the week is over. So I'm going to leave, let's leave this up just for a minute because you guys will need the quiz code that's on the screen to enter into that assessment link. I have to go now, but thank you guys so much for the information. It was very informative. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Take You're care. You're welcome. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you very much. Okay, bye, Javier. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Zaya.